When it comes to video, there are three types of editing, in-camera, linear, and non-linear editing. Each have their strengths. I first started editing using a linear editor over a decade ago. Well, that, that's not exactly true. I edited a video using a video toaster, but didn't really know what I was doing for a class. Uh, I used an introductory system called Avid Cinema, which output kind of ugly video using a scan converter and a VCR. Between that time and when I started using Final Cut, I learned to use a linear editor. It was controlled by a computer, but at its heart, the system was just three VTRs, which are professional videotape recorders. I could cut between two videotapes, a character generator, and record onto another tape. There was no capturing or transferring a video to a computer. The computer and the attached keyboard were the control mechanism. He used a video switcher to do the transitions, and if you wanted to create titles on the beginning of a video, it was a quick way to do it. The downside was that each time you changed something, you copied from one tape to another. With digital, that doesn't matter, but with analog tapes, it could get bad quickly. If you have a camera, you can do what's called in-camera editing. Saying it is simple, but doing it is hard. You just choose what you want to record and think while you're shooting about the story. If you're shooting a birthday party, you want to shoot the games, shoot the cake, shoot the candles being blown out, shoot the presents being opened, etc. Remember, you'll need to end uh, the previous shot in a way that when you start the next one, you can avoid breaking the 180 rule, more about that later, and vary the shots enough so that you don't have a jump cut. The positives of this type of editing are that you're mostly done when you're done with the event. The negative is that you could easily come up with a situation where you're planning your next shot and it doesn't easily segue from the previous one or you miss something unplanned or unannounced. The most common type of editing that people think of today is nonlinear editor. Use nonlinear editing using a nonlinear editor, also known as an NLE. The computer holds and manipulates the information. A good NLE can do all sorts of things from wacky transitions to a dizzying array of colorful text. Like the desktop publishing revolution in the late 80s, it's so easy to do effects that used to be difficult that now you often see videos that are overproduced. When I first started using an NLE, all video had to be transferred in real time from tape to the computer. The finished product had to be recorded onto tape in real time. That meant a one hour video took at least two hours to edit if it only had a simple 30 second fix to be made. Since videos are normally recorded on digital media like P2, SD, compact flashcards, etc., that's less the case today. Still, the level of control you have with an NLE means that you can fix things on the frame level. So depending on your abilities, you might spend hours on a video. I've spent 8 to 24 hours editing a 2-minute video before. It's not hard to do when you think of the universe of possibilities. If your plan is to create the video from a loose shot list, it can get even worse. Planning and organization really matter here. Learn the keyboard shortcuts. It will save you hours over the course of your edit to know that I means set an endpoint where you want the clip to start, or O sets the out point which is where you want the clip to end, rather than clicking on the screen. I often watch a video on fast forward if I know there are only a couple of tweaks to make 
in many editors, pressing L to do that or J to rewind. In better editors, you can copy effects from one clip and paste them onto others. This is really helpful for uh, basic color correction, for example, size, positioning, etc. My favorite trick is called the nested sequence. If you need to group things together, I'll make them a sequence in and of themselves and put that in the main sequence. This is called various things in various editors, but it's nice if you want to take a 1080p sequence and make it 720p. It's also great if you want to render a section like a moving background and reuse it. When I first started, I thought of myself as primarily an editor, and I love the control over time and space that this afforded me. Editing can chip away and uh, chip away at large lumps of a story and produce either a masterpiece or something more lumpy. Look at all the examples online of people that take films and re-edit them to make them part of a different genre or make them more interesting. That's really the power of editing. Use it wisely.